What's going on guys? Welcome back to Love Shack and today we're going to be getting into a deck profile video. I'm going to show off my Vision Hero deck profile today. Um, so it's been a while. Um, I've actually gotten back into the game, you know, sort of my spare time and I decided to pick up Heroes, which has always been a bit of an old favorite. Um, I actually think this deck's really fun and it's got a lot of consistency and <clears throat> we have quite a bit to talk about. The uh, most recent ban list, of course, brought Stratos back to two and there's been a lot of changes. So I'm actually kind of excited to get into this and sort of go through it. I'll explain some of my choices, although a lot of it's standard. And um, hopefully you guys do enjoy. And we're going to have some more deck profiles on the way soon, too, um, including some stuff from the newer sets. So stay tuned for that if you're not subscribed. I don't know how many of you are at this point. It's been quite a while. If you're not, feel free to click that subscribe button. Uh, the support does help. And uh, let's go ahead and jump right into this. So there's it's a very monster-heavy deck. This is all monsters here. Um, and, and I don't think... I think I play three traps. So some of the builds play, like, three impermanents. Um, I just like it not to go that direction with this. It's really good. So definitely, like, if you want to play it or you feel comfortable playing it, I definitely wouldn't fault you on that. Um, but I did not elect to play Impermanent in this build. So, uh, pretty standard, three Vision Hero Ferris and two Vision Hero Increase. I think that's the perfect ratio and for the most part it's going to be the ratio you're going to see in most builds. Um, increase isn't needed at three, it's recyclable in and of itself both by its own effect and just by the fact that you can like, you know, bring it out so easily and once you resolve it you know you should ideally put yourself in a strong position um ferris is just good you want to play as many of this as possible so you can really open it and get your combos going um for those unfamiliar if you're not you special summon him from a hand by discarding a hero monster when you do special summon him you can put a vision hero from your deck into your spell and trap zone where increase comes in increase of course if he's in your spell and trap zone you can tribute a hero monster then special summon him as a monster and special summon a level four or lower vision hero from your deck so that's sort of the general like uh you know opening play you want there of course with that um vision hero does um uh, sorry i made that total mess up here but that's fine ignore me all right so you do vion uh pretty much the primary target there for um Increase once you get him out. Vion, when it's special summoned, you can send a hero monster from your deck to the graveyard, uh, as well as you can banish a monster from your graveyard to add a polymerization from your deck to your hand. So, obviously, polymerization is not great, you know, just in general, but like it's a free sort of bonus off this card, and it does enable you to make a lot of like late game plays, which I'll talk about a little bit once we get in there. So, yeah, Vion's a good, you know, basically Vion off increase, mill something, and if you mill Shadow Mist, you get a free search. So, realistically, it's a really powerful play, and I think increase itself is just insanely good. Um, you know, as monster heavy as this is, there's a lot of spells too, so it does sort of work. Two Shadow Mist, um, standard. I don't think three is necessary in any way. Um, we do have a lot of search power, and Shadow Mist in and of itself is just you know, to an extent, really powerful, but it's recyclable and it's just strong. And then two of the Solid Soldier. Um, Solid Soldier, again, you don't need three. You have so many search cards with the spells, with Stratos and everything. When Solid Soldier's Normal Summon, you special summon a level four, a lower hero monster from your hand. Of course, you can summon Shadow Mist, which triggers the effect, uh, but Stratos is obviously a great target for it as well. So both of these are more or less just kind of standard. I guess if you wanted to play three Shadow Mist, you could. I do just feel like later in the game, it does kind of become a bit of a dead draw. So. That's my rationale on not playing it at three. Uh, I think two is a pretty good number. Uh, two Destiny Hero Malicious. I wish this card was at three. Um, it's insane. It's it's still one of the best cards in the deck and just an overall insane card. Um, it. It's a, just it's it's such a good combo piece. I mean, I feel like Malicious doesn't really need a ton of explanation, but just saying it's really good. One Celestial, um, unfortunately the common. Um, there was like a buyout on the secrets, and I don't have mine anymore. Uh, really good draw power. Randomly can pop face up spells too, and like pendulums are obviously more prevalent than they were, so it's not bad at any sense to be able to make use of that effect on random scenarios. But more or less, you just want to dump it for that. Uh, one Plasma. I really like the card. I don't summon it a ton, but you, there are scenarios where you have a lot of extra stuff on board. You can drop it. It negates monster effects. It puts your opponent in a tough spot, too, where they kind of have to find ways to play around it if you have this and Dark Law or this and something else on the board. So just in general being a name. And I play one Dasher. So some people play Dynatag, which I'm not a huge fan of just because the card itself is relatively bad. It combos well with Dystopia, but I just don't inherently love it. Um, honestly, you might find some people to just tell you that the four is good. I just like Dasher in general because of the, the ability to trigger Shadow Mist effects, Stratos, etc. Like, without wasting your normal summon later in the game. Um, and obviously just being another body that you can put on the board in random scenarios. So that's my Destiny Hero lineup, all five of those. You don't really need to play anymore, even though I guess you could play, like, 
I don't know, a disc commander. I saw some built with disc commander. I don't know exactly whether or not I would go that route, but and then so obviously like the MVP two Stratos. This card's insane. Um, even <laughs> I don't know why they put it back to two. I really do think it enables so many combos. The fact that it's not a hard once per turn just makes it so much better. So obviously, if I could play three of this, I would. You can loop this in a thousand different ways with Solid Soldier and recycling it. It's just I mean Stratos is. A great card and of course one elemental hero honest neos you really don't need to play more than one you can search it with cross crusader you can search it with stratos ecall um, it's a game finisher that can really like sort of help you to put that extra damage on board and it's an honest that you know obviously kind of goes without saying so really good card like it's it's insanely good at one i've never felt myself wanting to play more than one but i've won a lot of games because i'm playing it so that's my feeling on that um let's get into the spells so first off, three Super Poly. Again, this is relatively standard. Like, I'm not going to go on and on about it, but this card is arguably, in my opinion, like one of the best cards of the game. Um, and the fact that it's uncounterable and the fact that there's so many different extra deck monsters, you get out all sorts of boards. It's just, it's great. Uh, I don't think it's going to stay at three for too long, but I guess we'll see what happens with the list and whether or not this actually sees any significant, you know, play outside of decks like this. Uh, one Monster Reborn. I guess I'll just throw down a few of the generics, like standards there. Uh, one Reinforcement of the Army, one Foolish Burial, all pretty self-explanatory, and then one Polymerization, just for Vion, I hate that art a bit too. Um, one Hero Lives, I again wish you could play three of this. Um, if you open this card and your opponent doesn't have a hand trap to stop your place, like if they don't stop your Hero Lives and they don't have anything beyond that, you more or less win. Like this card being able to get Stratos and search Faris and sort of set up your combos, Hero Lives is insane, but... You know, that's pretty self-explanatory again, my, like, word of the day. All right, so three, uh, Fusion Destiny. Um, this card is, for those of you who don't know, uh, you can fusion summon a Destiny Hero monster from your deck, use, uh, extra deck using monsters from your deck as material. Uh, basically that works with Destiny Hero Dangerous to send any Destiny Hero and any dark effect monster, like Shadow Mist or one of your Vision Heroes. And it has a drawback that says you can't special summon monsters except Hero Monsters the rest of the turn, but, like, 97% of the deck is hero monsters, and it's not really a drawback. I mean, this is an insane. It's a mill of two. It sets up combos, and it gives you more of a, a body on board. So there's no reason not to maximize that. Uh, three E-Call. Uh, just, you know, you want to open it. You want to thin the deck. You draw power. You could play two, but there's just no point, you know, in not maximizing that, too. See Stratos and other stuff, which is your ultimate playmaker. And that way, you know, you do have multiples. If they do ash you, you still have, you know, time to another place uh triple mass change this i feel like kind of goes without saying in this deck dark law is still ridiculous and there's so many vision heroes that are also dark so it's not just shadow mist you're relying on with this and i'll tell you before we get to the intro i don't have master or dn there was a spike in price on that and uh Honestly, I think it's kind of, you could play it, you don't have to. It's definitely good to further combos with Solid Soldier, so I want to get it, and I would recommend playing it if you have it, but in general, just, you know, being able to see mass change early and put Dark Law on board is something that puts pressure on a lot of decks. And for the last two spells, Twin Twister, two of them, ironically. I've gone back and forth on this card, and some of the builds that I saw before putting this together weren't playing it at all. And I will say that Stratos' ability to pop, you know, spells and traps does give you outs to things, but, like, there are times where you can't necessarily get Stratos on the board with something else, or your opponent locks you out early and you need to be able to get over stuff. Twin Twisters in general existing makes that a hell of a lot easier. You can discard Malicious, you can discard Dasher, Shadow Mist. I can't bring myself to take it out. So, like, if some of you guys have seen it and, and not loved it, I definitely understand. And always open to suggestions, like, if you have other things you'd recommend, I can't, I can't bring myself to take it out. I just think it's too useful of a utility um, card to not play. So, I would keep it at two. I've tried, I wanted to cut it, um, but I couldn't. So, all right, four cards left. I am playing a 42-card build right now. I, I sort of am, like, attached to what I have here, and I'm having trouble getting it cut down, but I'll do, you know, further builds going forward. So, Triple Summon Limit. This is what I'm playing instead of Impermanence. Um, Impermanence is definitely a better card, uh, but I think Summon Limit has some really, really strong combo potential with Dark Law, especially because any deck that can get over Dark Law in the meta with ease is usually going to do so by, you know, repeatedly summoning or not caring about banishment. So, you know, being able to make a Dark Law and then flip a Summon Limit if your opponent doesn't have a Twin Twister or something to get around it is a powerful board. I played some games with this, like, in testing against, like, frogs and stuff where they can make Nightmare Phoenix and they can out summon limit and kind of get around that with some form of ease um you know it's definitely one of those things that like if they can out it it's troublesome 
for you, but you have Dark Law as a backup. So at least the resources that they have to exhaust in getting rid of this, um, I've just found it to be really powerful. And because you're typically, after your first turn, not really summoning multiple times in a turn anyway, um, it doesn't really hurt you. Obviously with summon limit, like, I mean, with this deck, you want to go second and you want to, I mean, depending on your matchup, but like you go second, you can put damage on board to win. Like you can OTK easily. If you don't, then at least you have that as a backup. And then the other card I'm playing one of, which is sort of random, but sort of like I was intrigued by it. I wanted to see how it would work. And as I expected, the one of made it nearly impossible to draw. Um, Storm Dragon Return is from Rising Rampage. Target a banished monster, special summon it, then during the end phase, return it to the hand. Obviously, like there's instant synergy with this, with Stratos and Shadow Mist and other stuff that you might banish with Celestial or any of your other cards that are gonna banish heroes from grave, like Vion. Um, in theory, it does have some combo potential, but I don't know that it's necessary. So I kept it in for the sake of the video because I do think it's an interesting like tech choice that might be worth looking at, and certainly other decks are going to maximize this, but I would think that I'm likely going to end up cutting this because um, I can't see playing it at three with space, and it just doesn't necessitate it. Like I think it's more of a win more card than it is doing anything um, substantial. So that's the full build. Like I said, 42 um, cards on that. I do, I mean, you obviously there's stuff there you can cut, so it's not as though it's to that build set in stone, um, but it's definitely strong, uh, just as an overall. And so let's move on to the extra deck. Uh, two Destiny Hero Dangerous. You can play Dystopia. It's pretty solid. Um, it does have the ability to do the burn damage, and if you play it in co combination with Dynatag, you can do the burn. Uh, I don't play it anymore, but that's Dystopia there. When it's summoned, you can target a little for a lower Destiny Hero in the grave, burn your opponent equal to its attack. And then it combos with Dynatag to pop a card on the field if its attack is different. I just didn't like it. Um, I just think Dangerous is better. And Dangerous is more live with Super Poly. So there's definitely reasons to sort of look at both of those and be like, yeah, this is... I can see why you go 1-1. One, one. I just like this better. I just think this card in general... I mean, the fact of the matter is its effect isn't really all that relevant. You discard a card to send a Destiny Hero from deck to grave. Um, and then all Destiny Heroes on the field gain 200 for each in your graveyard. But realistically, the fact that it's a dark monster plus a dark effect monster is what makes it so good. Um, two Dark Law. And one Anki. I mean, I don't really see a need for three Dark Law. Space on this deck is relatively limited. It's insane. I'm not even going to go into this. Like, that's standard with any deck that's playing Heroes and Mass Change. You would play that. Uh, the only other one I want to play is Mass Hero DN, which I don't have right now, like I said. So if you can fit it in there as a fourth Mass Hero, I do recommend it. It's a really, really strong card. Um, moving on to the Lynx. I play two Extra Hero Cross Crusader. Broken card. Um, when it's Link Summon, target a Destiny Hero in your graveyard, special summon it, and then once per turn, you contribute a Destiny Hero, add a Hero Monster from your deck to your hand with a different name. So it searches any of your heroes. You contribute Malicious to search Stratos. You can get, I mean, the combos you can pull off with this are great. Like this card is really, really good, and it is a hero and it's dark, so it doesn't have any conflict with Fusion Destiny or any of your other effects. Of course, his quote unquote drawback. You can't special summon monsters to turn to use effects other than hero monsters, so it's it doesn't really hurt you in any way. One extra hero wonder driver. I honestly don't make it a ton, but it's good. Uh, if a hero monster is normal or special summon to its zone, you can target a polymerization card or a fusion card or a change card in your graveyard, meaning your super poly or mass change. Uh, or Destiny Fusion and add it to your hand. Um, and then, of course, if it's destroyed by battle, you can special summon a hero monster from your hand. So I use that effect once to drop a Shadow Mist and search uh, Mass Change, gave me Dark Law, and was able to win the next turn because of it. But that effect doesn't come up a ton. And one Dread Decimator. This is a ranked, uh, ranked three, so, or Link three, I'm sorry. So it's definitely, like, not the ideal play all the time, but it does piercing and it gives all the heroes it points to 100 attack for each hero in your grave. Later in the game, it's definitely one of those things that can put some damage on board. So I like it. I like it as a one of. Those are the extra heroes. When they came out, I don't think they were great, but I think at, over time they've sort of gotten better. Um, I played two other fusion heroes. This is Adoration. Really, just because it's, I mean, it has like a Ryoku effect, but it's just two hero monsters. So like you can use polymerization to trigger the uh, solid soldier. You can just put an extra body out. You can summon Stratos and they Ash Blossom it. You can chain, do super poly. Like there's just a lot of stuff you can do. Um, and of course, Trinity, um, this card is, is nuts. When it's summoned, it's attack doubles during that turn and it can attack three times, but it can't attack directly. So like I was playing against Orcus with this and the guy had a really good board. It was like, uh, there was like Dengirsu and a couple back row, and he had Galatea and another thing, and basically made Trinity at 5,000 and just ran into Galatea three times for game. Like a board that I couldn't out otherwise, just pretty much was able to beat over it with massive damage. And that 
because of Vision Hero Increase putting extra monsters on the board, you really don't, it's not too hard to be able to have the materials to summon him. Uh, I play one other random, so I really like this card. Let me say that first. This is from Rising Rampage, a Link Mail Arch Fiend. Um, it, you may not be familiar with it. It's uh, Link 4, two, two or more monsters, including at least one Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, or Exceeds monster. When it's summoned, you can target one of that type of monster, one of those four, in your grave, or that you control all your opponent's monsters, lose attack equal to that monster's attack till the end of the turn. And your opponent cannot target monsters you control that were special summoned from the extra deck with monster effects. So it's actually really good if you can... Ma I've been able to make this like a turn after playing Fusion Destiny or like later once it... I don't have to worry about that drawback of only heroes. Um, and then of course, if it would be destroyed, you can banish if you know one of those four from your graveyard instead. It's a powerful card. It, obviously, the only thing that hurts it is the fact that it doesn't synergize nearly as well with the Fusion Destiny and Wonder Driver and stuff, but I really like it, and rather than Boral Sword, which is just one of those things that, like, Trinity essentially does what Boral Sword can do, and it, it both of them have that restriction, meaning this and Boral Sword, and that they're not heroes, I like it better. I think it offers some protection. So, um, again, you know, if you are leaning towards being, you know, going the more standard option, uh, Boral Sword's obviously an option, too. I just decided after testing that I like Link Mail Arts even better. So I just put the options out there for what um, there is to play. And then the last three, these are pretty much just super poly targets. Uh, I do see Salamangrid a lot to an extent still. I think the deck's still pretty solid even though the list did hit it. So Violet Chimera is, I mean, super poly with this deck is more or less an auto win against Salamangrid. It's just because, you know, you can search it, you have three of it, and it's really even the discard isn't a drawback to you. You're clearing your opponent's board for nothing. And uh, Mud Dragon of the Swamp, I didn't make it. I haven't made it a ton in, in testing, but like it's just good there. It can certainly out stuff and anything with the same type. If you're playing against different True Draco, things like that, you have ways to get around it. Starving Venom, I did use today against Sky Striker. Won me a Sky Striker matchup because I had a Dark Monster. They had a Dark Monster and they couldn't chain Ray effect. So it's just two Dark Monsters on the field. Really good card overall. And so yeah, that is the total build. I don't have a side deck put together yet, so to be honest, I don't know exactly what I would play. I mean, you'd be really looking at like your Pancratops and Impermanence and Ash Blossoms, just general stuff. I don't think this deck needs to go extremely like unique side heavy, but just having access to a lot of that stuff. I don't like Lancia. I, I, I toyed around with the idea of the Artifact Engine. It just doesn't synergize well with anything here. So realistically speaking, I'm actually really happy with the deck and the way it's performed so far. I think the inclusion of Ferris and Increase being able to just sort of mitigate dead draws and even opening something like Malicious doesn't hurt nearly as much when you have Ferris because it still more or less guarantees you can put like two Link Monsters or a Link and a Fusion on board. Um, so yeah, that's that's the build. I really like it. It's super fun and I think heroes in general have potential to be really good. I don't know that they'll be a tier one, uh, but I do think that they're worth checking out and obviously people will over time find their own combos, their own things to work out that'll make it, you know, easier for them to play it. So I definitely do recommend uh, giving it a try. And if you like the deck or you get a chance to test with the profile and you want to let me know how you did, feel free to drop a comment down below. We'd be more than happy to hear from you guys. And um, we do have some more deck profile videos coming in the future as well as potentially some other Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thank you guys for checking out the video. And if you did enjoy, please like, comment, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.